Welcome back to another video, and this one's coming to you from Dumfries, Virginia, and Potomac Shores Golf Club. This one has easily become one of my top courses that I've played. I think I have it ranked um, in my top three. Um, and in fairness, I haven't played a lot. I've probably only played like 35, 40 courses in Virginia, but um, it's a Jack Nicklaus designed, gorgeous, gorgeous course with a beautiful scenery, and in particular, the elevation changes is what I really love. But this video coming to you from today will be match play against my hardest opponent ever, that's myself. And so you'll notice here that I have um, a red tracer and a green tracer. And I am using two different types of balls. It might be hard to see even here. How fun. Two tee shots. But yeah, in case it wasn't clear there, I am playing, um, my first ball is a logo ball. I think I'm playing the TP5 picks. Um, I might switch over to the Chrome Soft Soccer balls. But then the other one is just a plain, regular white vanilla ball. Um, so it might not come off in camera in terms of which balls I'm playing. So hopefully the color coordination and you'll see little blurbs pop up of Mark 1 and Mark 2. And I thought so long and hard about trying to come up with funny names or like an evil alter ego that would have been fun. Yeah, the think tank was empty and we had to settle on Mark 1, Mark 2. The creativity levels are through the roof. Absolutely nuts. But anyway, um, hole one is a par five and it starts off with, it, it's not just a straightforward par five. It's kind of a dog leg right. But luckily, Mark 1 has a birdie putt. And I didn't think this through, by the way. This is, I was laughing at myself right here. You know, I arguably could have just called good, good with myself. Mark down a birdie and par for the card, and then I end up shooting like a 61 on the day. But yeah, golf is a game of honor, and I'm the most honorable guy ever. Goose hit the honor rankings. Uh, move me up a couple slots if I'm not already at the top. But look at this hole. This is a par three, and um, the camera doesn't really do it justice. The elevation change here, and look at the little screen map on the right. You'll notice different tee boxes. Those tee boxes have... I don't know, 30 to 40 feet of elevation changes each box. So the farther back you go, the higher up you are. Um, beautiful hole, and I think this one actually plays. You can take a little less club. Uh, 166 straight up would probably be a smooth, controlled 7-iron, but I think I want 8-iron for both of these. And I'm pinned high, and the other one actually uh, hits the green, and I have a pretty good look at birdie. But anyway, um, in case it wasn't clear, so... We did have uh, Mark 1 take the hole on the first one, and uh, so we are one up, but then Mark 2 has a birdie putt here, and that's a good example, so we're obviously giving that putt right there, and it's kind of fun. Um, I actually had to bring certain match play mentality, so that last putt, you saw that it had a lot of gas on it, ended up hitting the lip and rolling out, but I told myself, you have to go for it. Let's go ahead and push the hole, so anyway... So it brings us to our first par four of the day, and you'll notice it's only about 300, I think it's less than 350 yards. The first time I played this course, I actually played with someone who knew this course in and out. And one of the things I really, really appreciate about this course is that you don't need driver on every hole. There will actually be numerous holes that you can get away with just like a 200 yardish type club and this is actually one of them if you can have like a 2 215 fairway finder that you're consistent with it'll probably leave you with like a wedge in the downside for myself is i don't have that club and because i don't hit the driver far i'm actually using driver for most of the holes anyway but it's just a really cool concept where you know it's a good mixture and variety of holes where every par four isn't just driver and hit and spray and pray um, a lot of strategy to it in this hole, I, I don't know if it was evident from the camera. Actually, right here proves my point. Um, it's almost like an island green, so it was protected. Look how elevated the green was. So even though it's just rough down there, um, this was pretty much you had to know the number. You had to stick it, and if not, you get stuck in that you know, really thick, crappy uphill lie. So little things like that, You, I know exactly why this place is a 139 slope. The greens are tough. It's really protected well, and you'll never really have a flat lie on a lot of these holes. But anyway, we end up with a bogey bogey on this hole. No blood. We are still all square through three. Another reason why I love this course so much is that it starts you off with a short par five. Uh, par three, a short par four, and now another par three. So it gives golfers a chance to get off to a really good and low start. And obviously, I do the exact opposite. I have a pretty crappy start as um, I'm already a couple over. Um, but in my defense, um, actually, I hit two good shots there. So let's take a look. Those were pretty two good shots. Um, 
fight to guess they're both about 12 ish 15 feet that's the logo ball that's regular but as I was saying in my defense, I actually did not go to the range. Uh, of course not, because why would I? But the other thing is if you notice the clothing that I'm wearing, so I still have my beanie, multiple layers. It was a cold, cold day. I think this round was coming to you in the 40s and extreme wind conditions. Um, you can see the flag stick blowing like crazy and you'll actually see, because I'm just a super dramatic guy, you're gonna see the camera actually blow over and I leave that in the edits just to prove a point. Um, but anyway, that's actually two really good pars. And notice how I made mark number two put that out um, because it was not a give me. But I shed one layer as we're talking about how much clothes I have on. We go just a sweatshirt because it was warming up a little bit in the sun. And this is when hopefully I can start going low. But here's another example of, um, you know, on the screen, this looks like a straightforward par four, just 400 yards and straight. But Hopefully you can see right here on this angle. Notice the lies of the fairway. It's very slopey. That was ball below my feet. This is now ball slightly above my feet. And look at that shank. That is shank city. Um, that's what this course does to you. You know, the one hole that's finally quote unquote straightforward, just a couple bunkers and straight. Nope. Super, super elevated. And then look at this green, um, two disastrous green side bunkers, which I end up finding. But, you know, I'm just a wedge wizard and decide to, oh boy, that's a uh, skyrockets in flight. And we are on the outside part of, um, luckily, I think it hit the last part of the green and stopped in this first chunk. But we are now chipping back on for par. And I need to get this one close. And it's exactly what I do. God, thought that actually went in put a lot of pressure on mark number two. You suck, mark number two. Um, and I don't know if I explained this earlier, but, oh, timber, there it goes, there she blows. But um, I don't know if I explained this earlier, but mark number one, so the red tracer and the logo ball, I'm actually keeping that score for all 18 holes. I switched the format for the back nine, that'll be part two of my video, but for handicap purposes, I actually decide to, um, uh, um, keep track of the score for my first one and that'll be the same in my second video but anyway here is a shorter par 4 again only 280 yards it might have been playing even shorter than that based on where the tee boxes were today but if you take a look here you do not need driver you could take like a five iron hybrid punch it out it'll leave you with like a gap wedge in so obviously if i say you don't need driver i take driver out it's exactly what i do um in my small defense it was wind in your face and since i don't hit it far anyway i figured i'd just play like a controlled punchy fairway finder and i do find the fairway on both but these greens are absolutely nuts. So I think I had uh, about 60, 65 yards in both of those shots from different angles. But if you even miss a foot short or a foot left, you catch this slope and it rolls all the way down. The first, uh, This shot right here that I'm chipping back onto, mark number two, I actually hit the green. It just rolled and sloped that way. My first shot, I think my first bounce was just on the fringe and took a ridiculous 90 degree hop to the left. Jesus, wind, can you calm down? Can you just let me, oh, of course, and there it goes. The wind's now taking over the camera. That's how crazy it was today. So not only is it cold and you can't hold the greens, but the wind's in your face. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think of every excuse possible for why I'm playing so poorly. Four over through six, not great, but here's my favorite hole coming up. This, this hole seven, it's my favorite hole. Look how it's elevated. I'm assuming that's the tips. Our tee box is there. Just look at it. I've literally had dreams about this hole. It's so fun. Um, I actually think I birdied this last time I played, so good juju all around. Let's go. And as you can hopefully imagine, you know, this in the summertime or in pure mid-golf season, uh, when the trees are fully grown back, bushes are lush, the, the fairways are actually nice and kept, same with the boxes. Um, this is just one of the gorgeous, gorgeous holes. This one actually stood out in my mind when I played it last of how much fun and how beautiful it was. Um, you know, in the in Potomac Shores' defense, because I'm playing this in basically still winter conditions, I think you could tell some of the greens just finished or are still being aerated a little. Uh, the fairways are still growing back, but you know, all things considered, the, the shape of the course is actually very, very good. Um, and I can't wait to see what it looks like in maybe a couple months. Maybe I'll do another video playing this again, as it is one of my favorite courses. And it's now, I don't know if I mentioned this too, but it's actually officially public. I think this used to be a private course, but you can now book this through, you know, Golf Now and other online websites. So it does take us peasants like myself 
uh, which I'm grateful for because it's such a cool course. But anyway, um, here's Mark two for par, and I need this to put pressure on Mark one, and oh boy, um, I think, funny how, notice I didn't go good, good there. I make him putt that Mark one. So we finally strike, we break the all square through multiple holes, and Mark one is officially up one with two to play. And this par five is another example of, you know, every hole here isn't just straightforward. So it, on the card, it reads 435 according to the little map, as you can see, but it is a complete dogleg right. Uh, the person I played here with before who gave me some advice, unless you're a super long hitter and you can cheat it and carry kind of the cart path-ish area, there's no way you're reaching home in two. You actually want to just play this tee shot just straight forward and hit it uh, pretty dead center. As long as you don't hit it further than like 270, 275, you'll be fine and not run out of fairway. My second shot, I got really lucky here. I actually saw, I think it rolled from the sand into that rough. I play a really good cut around those trees, and I am in position A after that second shot. The pressure is on for mark number one, and I end up hitting a really poor, poor shot. I wasn't trying to fade it that much. It was like a push fade, and because the, the grass was so thick, it actually stopped it there. And so mark two, let's be a play... Let's be a playmaker is what I was going to say. And of course, we chunk it into the sand, but it's fine. We'll go ahead and just recover. Oh, geez. And now we blade it out of the sand. When it rains, it pours. And I was just laughing to myself because how crappy this um, ball is playing. It's, of course, the one that I'm not keeping my official score on. There's the wind again. But look how close I put that one to. It ends up being a gimme. So Mark number one gave that to him. And I now have, I believe, two putts to win this hole as this is a birdie putt coming for you. That is the meatiest bone I think I've ever seen. Um, and of course I can't give that, it's for the match. So mark number two said, hey, putt that. And of course, uh, you know, we're going to. And I've been getting to this habit of not really lining up and trusting your initial line. Uh, it's been working for shorter putts, but my lag putts have not been great, but anyway, Wow, Mark one, what a stud. He ends up going uh, par, par, par the last three holes to win the match. And now hole nine is just a free roll hole and um, just a par four, pretty straightforward. You can see that uh, I took a really cheating line with Mark number two since it wasn't for score and we're just playing for fun because I'm not tracking Mark number two. I try to take a really, really aggro line. So if you can cover those bunkers, you can see it right there. If you can cover it, it leaves you with like a flip wedge in. Um, of course, I can't hit it far enough and barely clear it. I think I literally hit the top of that lip and it rolled down. Super unfortunate. And then we chunk that shot to, uh, I think, to within 60 yards. But uh, anyway, we have a chance to recover from arc number two. I end up hitting a really good wedge shot. It spun more than I thought and didn't roll out, so it leaves me with like a 20-footer. But hey, I have a putt for par after two pretty bad shots, and we just miss it. Ugh. Obviously, that's good. Get it out of the way. And here's the one that really matters. And this would be huge to be in the 30s. This would be for a 39 front nine, and we miss it. At least we didn't live it short, and <laughs> yikes. In hindsight, that was a pretty generous gimme. I think just because the match was over, I didn't care. But because I'm keeping track of score, probably should have putted out. But guess what? Of course, it's always the second putt that matters, right? No. Wow, we didn't make it there either. So anyway, that wraps up the front nine, and I end up with a four over 40, and Mark two has a seven over 43. Mark one takes the win, but stay tuned for part two where you'll see the back nine, and I actually have a fun video where it's me playing the tips versus the regular distances to see how a short hitter fares, but till next time.